Book of Heaven, Volume 24, Part 2 April 1, 1928, Necessity of the Test What the test will be for the children of the Divine Kingdom One who lives in the Divine Will offers royal acts to God. The Long Story of the Divine Will Example My abandonment in the Divine Will is continuous. But while I was all abandoned in it, I was thinking to myself, what might be the test that Jesus will want from those who will live in the Kingdom of the Divine Will? If Jesus wants a proof of loyalty from everyone in order to confirm the state to which he calls them and to be sure of being able to entrust to the creature the goods he wants to give her, much more will he require this proof from the children of his kingdom. That will be the most sublime state that can exist. But while I was thinking of this, my always lovable Jesus moved in my interior and told me, My daughter, indeed there is no certainty without a test, and when the soul passes the test, she receives the confirmation of my designs and everything that is necessary to her and befits her in order to carry out the state to which she has been called by me. This is why I wanted to test Adam, to confirm his happy state and his right of kingship over the whole creation. And since he was not faithful in the test, by justice he could not receive the confirmation of the goods that his Creator wanted to give him. In fact, through the test, Man acquires the seal of faithfulness that gives him the right to receive the goods that God had established to give him in the state to which his soul had been called by him. It can be said that one who is not tested has no value, neither before God nor before men, nor before himself. God cannot trust a man without a test, and man himself does not know what strength he possesses. If Adam had passed the test, all human generations would have been confirmed in his state of happiness and of royalty. In the same way, I myself loving these children of my divine will with a love all special, wanted to go through the test for all of them in my humanity, reserving for them the one test of never letting them do their will, but only and always my will, so as to reconfirm for them all the goods needed in order to live in the kingdom of my divine fiat. With this, I closed all exit doors for them. I anointed them with an invincible strength, in such a way that nothing else will be able to enter the so very high fences of my kingdom. In fact, when I command that something should not be done, it is a door that I leave, through which the human will can make its exit. It is an occasion that the creature always has, by which she can go out of my will. But when I say, from here there is no exit, all doors remain closed. Weakness is fortified. And the only thing that is left to her is the decision to enter, never to go out again. 
or not to enter at all. Therefore, in order to live in the kingdom of my will, there will only be the decision. The decision will carry the accomplished act. Am I not doing the same with you? Do I not cry out constantly from the depth of your heart? Nothing dare enter but my will alone. As center of life, with its omnipotent strength, with its dazzling light, my will keeps everything outside of you, and eclipsing everything, it makes its prime motion of life flow in all of your acts, and it dominates and reigns as queen. After this I was following the acts of the divine will in all creation, to bring them as homages to my Creator, and a motion of life flowed within all created things, that reunited them all, and moved everything. I was surprised, and my sweet Jesus added, My daughter, this motion of life in all creation is my will that moves everything and holds all things as though in its hand of life. How long is its motion? And while being multiple, it is one. Therefore the story of my will is long, and your work in composing its story becomes extremely long. And as much as you would like to shorten your speaking, it is difficult for you to do it, because its motion, that moves everything continuously, has so much to say about what it has done in its so very long history, that as much as it has already said, it seems to it that it has said nothing. And since the motions, all lives, all fields, are its own. It has many ways to narrate its long story. And you will be the narrator and the bearer of the story of an eternal will that while telling you its story involves you within it to give you the life of its acts and to communicate to you as much as it is possible for you, its motion, and the goods it contains. Therefore you must know that one who lives in my will offers royal acts to the Eternal Majesty, acts that can be found only in the divine royal palace of my will. When the creature comes before us with the royal acts that our will does in all creation, only then do we feel truly honored by her. These are divine acts, worthy of our majesty. On the other hand, one who does not live in our will, as much good as he might do, offers us always human acts, not divine, acts that are inferior to us because the royal act of our divine fiat does not flow in them. It happens as to a king who is served by a page boy of his with all the things that are in his royal palace. Even though they are his own things, the king feels honored, because if he drinks, he drinks his pure water in golden vases, clear and clean. If he eats, the food is worthy of him, and is given to him in silver platters. If he clothes himself, he is brought royal garments that befit him as king. The king 
feels all pleased and satisfied because he is served with the royal things that belong to him. On the other hand, another page boy serves the king, but when the king wants to drink, he goes to his own miserable home to take his turbid water and brings it in vases of clay, not well cleaned. If the king wants to eat, he goes to take his own unrefined food and in disgusting plates. If the king wants to clothe himself, he brings him unadorned garments, unworthy of a king. The king is not pleased nor honored in being served by this page boy. Rather, he remains with a pain in his heart and says, How can this be? I have my own royal things, and this one dares to serve me with the miserable things of his home? The first page boy is one who lives in my will. The second is one who lives of human will. What great difference between the two. April 4th, 1928. How in God the Word is everything. Knowledge is the bearer of the divine act and of the possession of divine goods for creatures. Cure that Jesus prescribed. I was doing my round in the divine fiat, and many things about the supreme volition wandered through my mind. So I thought to myself, how can it be that if the knowledges about the divine will become known to creatures, its kingdom can come? If he did so much for the coming of the kingdom of redemption, the mere knowing was not enough, but he operated, suffered, died, performed miracles. Will the knowledges alone be enough for the kingdom of the divine fiat, which is greater than redemption? But while I was thinking of this, my lovable Jesus moved in my interior and told me, My daughter, in order to form the smallest thing, Creatures need works, steps, and raw materials. But God, your Jesus, does not need anything to create and form the greatest works and the entire universe. For us the word is everything. Was the whole universe not created with the word alone? And in order for man to enjoy all this universe, it was enough to know it. These are the ways of our wisdom. In order to give, we make use of the word. And in order to receive, man must make use of knowing what we have said and done with our word. In fact, if a people does not know all the varieties of plants that are spread throughout the whole earth, it does not enjoy, nor is it the possessor of the fruits of those plants, because in our word there is not only the creative strength, but united with it there is also the communicative strength, that is, the strength to communicate to creatures what we have said and done, but if they do not know it, nothing is given to them. What did man add in order to enjoy the light of the sun and receive its effects? Nothing. Nor did he add anything to the water he drinks, to the fire that warms him, and to many other things created by me. However he needs to know them, 
otherwise it would have been for man as if they did not exist. Knowledge is the bearer of the life of our act and of the possession of our goods for creatures. So the knowledges about my will have the virtue of forming its kingdom in their midst, because such has been our purpose in manifesting them. And if in redemption I wanted to descend from heaven to take on human flesh, it was because I wanted to descend into all human acts to reorder them. More so, since Adam had withdrawn from our divine will, to content his humanity, and with this he disordered himself completely. He lost his state of origin, and I had to follow the same path, descend into a humanity, so as to reorder him anew, and everything I did in it was to serve as remedy, medicine, example, mirror, light, to be able to put decayed humanity in order. Now having done all that was necessary, and still more, so much that I had nothing else to do, I did everything, and I did it as God, with surprising means and with invincible love, in order to reorder this decayed humanity. And man cannot say, Jesus has not done this to cure us, reorder us, and place us in safety. Everything I did in my humanity was nothing but the preparation and the cures I prescribed, so that the human family might recover, to return once again into the order of my divine will. So after about two thousand years of cure, it is just and decorous for us, and for man, that he no longer be sick, but that he be healthy again, so as to enter into the kingdom of our will. And this is why the knowledges about it were needed, so that our creative word that speaks and creates, speaks and communicates, speaks and transforms, speaks and wins, might speak and make new horizons, new suns rise, for as many knowledges as it manifests, in such a way as to form so many sweet enchantments, that amazed, the creature will be conquered and invested by the light of my eternal will. In fact, nothing else is needed for its kingdom to come but the two wills kissing each other, one dissolving within the other. My will to give, and the human will to receive. Therefore, just as my word was enough to create the universe, so will it be enough to form the kingdom of my fiat. But it is necessary that the words I have spoken, the knowledges I have manifested, be known, to be able to communicate the good that my creative word contains. This is why I insist so much that the knowledges about my will, the purpose for which I manifested them, be known to be able to realize the kingdom that I so yearn to give to creatures. And I will overwhelm heaven and earth to obtain the intent. April 6, 1928 How the Soul Can Place Herself in the Divine Unity Example of the Sun the repeater of the Creator. How God gives sip by sip. Necessity for the knowledges to make their way.
I was thinking about the divine fiat in order to unite myself to its unity, to be able to make up for that unity of wills that is lacking between creator and creature. So I thought to myself, can I reach such extent of being able to penetrate into the unity of my creator? And Jesus moving in my interior told me, my daughter, when the soul places herself in the unity of my will, it is as if she placed herself in the sphere of the sun. Look at the sun. It is one. From the height of its sphere, it does one single act. But the light that descends down to the bottom embraces the whole earth. And from the effects of its light, it produces multiple and innumerable acts. Almost for each thing, for each plant, it invests it. It gives it its embrace of light and says to it, What do you want? Sweetness? I'll give it to you. And you, what do you want? Heat? I'll give it to you. And you, do you want fragrance? I will give it to you as well. Almost for each thing, the light pours the whole of itself out, and it gives to it what befits its nature, in order to form its life and grow according to the order created by God. Now, why all this? because that sphere contains so much light, and all the seeds and effects of all things and plants that are spread over the face of the earth. Now this is the symbol of the soul who wants to live in the unity of our will. She rises into the sphere of the sun of the eternal fiat, that contains so much light that no one can escape it, and possesses all the seeds of the lives of creatures. Its light goes about investing and molding everyone, and prays that each one may receive the life, the beauty, the sanctity wanted by their Creator. And the soul from that sphere becomes of all and gives herself to all. And she repeats our act, which is one. But that one act has the virtue of doing everything and of giving itself to all, as if each one had it at one's disposal and it were one's own. In fact, in us, unity is nature, and in the soul, it can be grace. And we feel bilocated in the creature who lives in our unity. And oh, how we delight in seeing the littleness of the creature ascending, descending, expanding within our unity to be the repeater of her creator. After this, I was thinking about how blessed Jesus would make the kingdom of his will come. How could the creature embrace, altogether, so many knowledges about it, and almost all at once? Good so great, divine manners, beauty and sanctity that contain the reflections of the likeness of her creator. But while I was thinking of this, my beloved Jesus moved in my interior and told me, my daughter, by her nature, the creature cannot receive a great good, a light that has no boundaries, altogether. But she must take it sip by sip, waiting to swallow the first sip, to then have another one. And if she wanted to take everything together, poor one, she would be drowned and would be forced to put out what she cannot contain, waiting to first digest the little she has taken, 
for it to flow like blood in her veins, and for that vital humor to spread within her whole person, to then dispose herself to have another sip. Has this not been the order I have had with you, manifesting to you what regarded my eternal fiat, little by little, starting from the first lessons, then the second, the third, and so on. And when you were chewing the first, and you swallowed it, and it flowed like blood in your soul, I prepared for you the second lesson, and my will formed the first acts of life in you, and I celebrated its glory and fulfilled the purpose of creation, anxiously waiting to be able to give you more sublime lessons, to fill you so much that you yourself would not know where to take from in order to repeat them. So I will do to form the kingdom of my divine will. I will start from the first lessons that I have given you, and this is why I want that they begin to be known, that they may make their way, preparing and disposing souls, so that little by little they may yearn to listen to more lessons in view of the great good they have received from the first ones. This is why I have prepared lessons so long about my will, because it encloses the primary purpose for which man was created, as well as all things and the very life that man must carry out in it. So, without my will, it is as if man did not have true life, but a life almost foreign to him, and therefore full of dangers, of unhappiness, and of miseries. Poor man, without the life of my will, it would have been better for him if he had never been born. But to his great misfortune, he does not even know his true life, because until now there has been no one who has broken the true bread of its knowledges, so as to form pure blood and allow its true life to grow in the creature. They have broken for him a stale, medicated bread, that if it has not made him die, has not let him grow healthy, vigorous, and strong of a divine strength, as the bread of my will makes one grow. My will is life, and has the virtue of giving its life. It is light, and dispels darkness. It is immense, and takes man from all sides to give him strength, happiness, sanctity, in such a way that everything is safe around him. Ah, you do not know what treasures of grace these knowledges conceal what good they will bring to creatures. And this is why you do not have interest that they begin to make their way, to give start to forming the kingdom of my will. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 24, Part 2. Fiat. 